Breaking news, a major crash involving an 18 wheeler is leading to traffic tie ups on both sides of I 10 tonight. This just outside of Loop 1604 on the east side of the county. Sky 12 over the scene for us. No word on any injuries right now. This is near I 10 in Graytown. We've seen law enforcement direct drivers on the eastbound lanes of I 10 onto the frontage road. That's because when drivers in the westbound lanes get to that Graytown area, they're being directed across the median to the eastbound lanes of I 10 to look for that detour. We have a crew on scene and we'll bring you the latest as it becomes available. Another big story we're following today, a marathon standoff now over. It took 76 hours before this man, Sonny Quintero Rojas, gave himself up to police. The mugshot just released to us this afternoon. This all started Wednesday night at the Agora Stone Oak Apartments. Our Camelia Juarez is there where this all finally ended this morning. And Camelia, you spoke with someone who said the standoff essentially forced him out of his home. Yeah, he told us that him and his wife were frustrated. I mean, they were kicked out of their own home for several days. Now that couple and several residents within the building heard police and those really public conversations with the suspect. Act like a 42 year old man would for once in my life. I'm going to act my age. I'm not going to be. Now we have a picture of this man. Finally, police were after this man, Sonny Quintero Rojas. He's booked at the Bear County Jail on four charges tonight, including aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, parole violation, property theft and murder. San Antonio police confirmed he was wanted in the wanted in the death of a man out in Cuero. That's about 90 miles east of San Antonio. Now with the suspect in handcuffs, re residents can return home. One man who lived in the apartment right below where Rojas was barricaded says it was frustrating for him and his wife to be locked out of their home for nearly three days. Officer had told her to pack for like a day and then obviously this ended up being about three or four days, whatever it was. So it was it was difficult to deal with that, not be able to come home, just that feeling of not not having your home to go home to. Now, those residents were able to come back home today, like we said, and we were spoke, speaking to him and he said he's trying to catch up on errands, trying to get ready for the week. Um, but that same man you just heard from, his ring camera was rolling during the arrest. So we'll show you that video coming up on the night beat. Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. Thank you. We'll look forward to that story. New at 530, a robbery suspect on the run after taking a cash register in the heist. It happened at a store on Old Pearsall Road and Five Palms Drive last night. Take a look. Investigators say the suspect had a gun and is believed to have used a door code to get inside that store. Police say the suspect then pointed the gun at several people inside before running away with the register. If you can help police in this case, give them a call. Also, San Antonio Safe Offers tonight want you to take a close look at your screen. They have released these pictures of a man that they're looking for. They say this man is accused of breaking into a business near Riddiman and Loop 410 and then breaking into a safe. Investigators say he took thousands of dollars. This all happened back in May. If you know who he is, you're asked to call police. Their number 210-207-7716. Well, changes are being made months after the deadly shooting at Robb Elementary. Tomorrow, Uvalde CISD plans to discuss all security changes and upgrades for their schools. Those classes start in less than a month, so it'll be a chance for parents to ask all of their questions. The district announced counselors are undergoing trauma grief training for adolescents. Crews also removed old chain link fences at Dalton Elementary and will replace it with new design master fencing. The same will happen at Uvalde Elementary's Benson campus where children from Rob will attend. New cameras are also being installed at Uvalde High School and will be soon installed at Morales Junior High. Tomorrow's meeting is expected to cover those changes and more. It's scheduled to happen at Uvalde High School at 6 p.m. There will be an open forum for parents to address issues they may have. In the meantime, the district is also in the process of figuring out how many students will be returning to the district. And our coverage continues on social media on KSAT.com as well. There you can read about Rob Elementary School Principal Mandy, Mandy Gutierrez. She will be the school it, she will be at the school this coming school year, but under a new role. The former assistant principal of Uvalde High School will take over as principal of Robb Elementary. 
Back here in San Antonio, more than a month later, another gathering held today at the site where 53 migrants died in the back of a hot 18 wheeler. Organizers say today's event allowed people to share stories about those who lost their lives there on Quintana Road. Families also sharing their memories through phone calls and others sharing their poetry and paintings as a way to call leaders to action when it comes to immigration. And tomorrow, a local town hall will be held to discuss immigration. Sheriff Javier Salazar will be hosting the event along with several other panelists. You'll have a chance to ask immigration questions at the downtown UTSA campus on Cesar Chavez Boulevard. Doors will open at 6 p.m. and the town hall starts at 7. There is a no bag policy in place. Lots of kids are getting ready to return to class for back to school. The Silver and Black stepping in to help with free school supplies, health screenings and vaccines today. Parents, students and teachers were invited to the AT&T Center to get some free resources. The organization Spurs Give says it was the first time they've organized a one stop shop like this. I think we've had about 3000 people come through already and it's just uh, towards the beginning. So hopefully the start of uh, something great. San Antonio ISD also there today helping parents learn about free at home internet programs. And speaking of SAISD, a reminder tomorrow, we are helping you prepare for the start of the new school year. The superintendent of SAISD, Dr. Jaime Aquino, will be joining us live for a Q&A during our noon newscast. That's tomorrow on Monday. He'll be talking about dress codes and school lunches and so much more. So tune in. Still ahead on the news at 530, the nation on two separate sides of extreme weather. A San Antonio can't seem to get enough rain. Other areas getting way too much. A look at the hard hit areas next. Now to the extreme weather conditions across the nation. As San Antonio sits in the dry and hot conditions, other parts of the country are seeing torrential flooding. As ABC's Mola Lange shows us, the damage is left behind. California's Death Valley National Park remains closed this weekend after record rainfall caused dangerous flash flooding on Friday. About a thousand people were stranded when more than six months worth of rain fell in a matter of hours. You know, it sounded like the, the world was ending and then, you know, just this rushing water everywhere in, in a place that's usually absolutely bone dry. It was, uh, it, it was pretty incredible. Jeff Moreno was visiting from Vermont with his family. When I stepped out, uh, it probably came up to just below my knee, up by the park itself. The water was probably in spots, probably over your head. It took them six hours to make it out of the park as the floods turned roads into rivers, cars buried in the mud and debris, severe weather impacting other parts of the country as well. In Atlanta, Georgia, roads were flooded after the area was hit with three and a half inches of rain in just six hours. Heavy rains flooded numerous homes in Brooklyn, Arkansas, leaving some residents stranded. I thought, Lord, help me, please, because I had never saw anything like it. And in eastern Kentucky, just one week after the deadly flash flooding destroyed homes, businesses, and roads, the area is bracing for more rain. Volunteers and relief organizations are now helping residents clean up and rebuild their lives. It's a blessing. It's a big blessing because I didn't know where else to turn. President Biden will visit the region on Monday, where he'll meet with the families and get a first-hand look at the recovery efforts. Mola Lenghi, ABC News, New York. Yeah, too much rain in parts of the country. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, we're seeing some isolated showers and storms. Look at those teaser clouds there off in the distance, looking like they're going to drop a few showers uh, out there. But unfortunately, rain will remain isolated for the remainder of the evening. Here's a look outside with radar at the moment. We've got one particular storm that's pushing toward Lavernia, going to be clipping the northeastern section of Bear County into Guadalupe County. Elsewhere, some isolated downpours down near Divine. Now, here's a look at the aquifer. The the aquifer is actually up a foot over the past 24 hours. Only one allergen out there today. Molds are low. Tomorrow, some kids start in school, dropping them off warm and humid at the bus stop at 78, 99 for the high temperature. Stray, temperature, stray shower or storm possible in the afternoon. I'll be looking in depth at that radar, zooming in to those locations, seeing rain, and of course telling you what you can expect for the work week ahead. 
Correct me if I'm wrong, and I know you will. We didn't hit 100 again today. Correct. Yay. Don't need to correct you. We got, got up to, we got up to 99 degrees, yeah. And, and some folks got lucky with the rain. Here's a look at the live radar right now. You can see around San Antonio that it's generally quiet. There have been a couple of isolated showers, like on that outer edge of 410 there on the southwest side. But out to the east right now, we've got a storm that is pushing through parts of Wilson and Guadalupe County right on the border there. So just to the east of uh, Lavernia and to the east of Sutherland Springs. These are your typical sea breeze showers that, and thunderstorms that really don't last all that long. They also have a difficult time holding together, but they're moving to the northeast at about 15 miles per hour. So if we put a track on this, it could be close to Marion by about 630. Uh, but again, that's if it holds on. It, it's likely going to be falling apart quite a bit. And in fact, a few showers are possible through about sunset but most of us will miss out another flash of lightning right along uh, I-10 there in Gonzales County as well. And again, these will be dying down this evening as we lose that daytime heating. Tomorrow, just a 10% chance for an isolated shower storm. 99 was the high temperature. We technically missed 100, so a little victory there for us. And outside right now, it's 95 degrees. Winds are from the southeast at about 17 miles per hour, so it is pretty breezy. And it is going to be windy tonight with gusts up to about 25 miles per hour after the sun sets. Temperatures will fall into the 80s. Here's a look at the high res future cast. The main area of any kind of rain tomorrow will be along the coast. One or two of those may try to make a run for that I-35 corridor in the afternoon, and so we've got a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm tomorrow, but it's mainly just going to be a hot and humid day. Because we'll have a little bit more cloud cover, a lot like today, our high should stay just shy of 100, but close to it. 99 in San Antonio, 95 in Bulverde, 99 New Braunfels and Seguin, 100 though in Hondo and Divine, 97 in Comfort and in Kerrville. Your KSAT 12-hour forecast waking up early tomorrow morning. It's going to be 77 and humid outside. Temperatures will climb to the uh, near 90 degrees by about noon and it's after 2 p.m. that we'll have that 10% chance for a stray shower or storm 99 for the high temperature. On the satellite and radar, you know, you can tell that that heat high is not as prominent. The way you can tell that is there's plenty of rainfall activity across the central plains. If that heat high was stronger, we'd really be seeing a lot of uh, drier weather out there. But that heat high as it stands is weaker and to the north. And so that means a couple of things for us this week. The good news is we won't be dealing with record heat. It's still going to be hot. Temperatures will be near 100 or slightly below, but nowhere near those records that you see there. So at least the heat will be bare in the coming week and with that heat high not as strong it's going to open a window for rainfall especially on Thursday now only a 30% chance for some isolated showers and storms Thursday the bad news is we don't have any big gully washers in our forecast that would help us out with the drought. Uh, so unfortunately, no big rain chances. However, we'll be keeping tabs on that chance for rain on Thursday. Isolated showers and storms possible. Coming up on the night beat, we're going to talk about how this so far has been the driest year we've experienced to date, and we'll take a check of the tropics as well. All right. That seems like it tracks. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. All right, Andrew, one big question that the Cowboys are trying to figure out in their preseason camp is how to fit Tony Pollard into a bigger role in the offense. Yeah, every time this guy touches the ball, he usually goes for big yardage. So obviously the Cowboys want to get him more touches, right? The question is, how do they do that? When we come back, Greg Simmons has more on Tony Pollard's bigger role in the offense this coming season. Plus, the Texans want to run the ball more themselves. Got that too next. How cute is this? The Cowboys get the day off to spend time with their families who have flown into Oxnard, California. It's time to go camping with KSAT. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys have been training camp two weeks as of today, and there are only three more practices left before they break camp and head to Denver for a joint practice with the Broncos ahead of their preseason opener on Sunday night. One of the positions that the Cowboys are currently looking to fill is kick returner, with C.D. Lamb serving as the Cowboys' number one wide receiver and Tony Pollard assuming a larger role in the offense. Special teams coordinator John Fossil needs to find serviceable replacements. That's part of the reason why the Cowboys decided to sign former TCU Horn Frog Cavante Turpin, who brings some serious speed after earning MVP honors in the USFL over the summer. 
he's been on my radar since 2018. Clearly, you know, at TCU, I've watched every single one of his returns and then keeping an eye on him over the course of his fan league, football league, and spring league, and then USFL, I've seen all that work. So when we found out that he was on our radar, I was very hopeful. And obviously when we signed him, super excited. Now, one of the biggest changes in training camp this year has been the mandate that both Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard have to be on the field at the same time, but there's still some schematic work left to figure out. Should they be together in the backfield or should Pollard line up at wide receiver? With more on Pollard's increased workload this season, here's our Greg Simmons. What has encouraged you about being used more in the offense? Um, you know, just, just being more, you know, in the playbook, you know, being more involved in the play calling, you know, um, having different personnel with, you know, both guys on the field. So just seeing that so far. So far, so good for Cowboys running back Tony Pollard, who's in the past served as a backup for star Ezekiel Elliott. Now he's getting his own time to shine, sharing the backfield with Zeke, and at times being used more as a receiver. I don't want to say too much, but you know, just, just having me out there, you know, both of us out there at the same time, you know, having defenses confused on who they need to cover and who is the running back or who is out of receiver. So much so, Pollard has found himself hitting the playbook more often now, making an adjustment to receiver out of the backfield and in the slot. Running back to me now is, is pretty much second nature, you know, it's just going over fine detailing things, but receiver, you know, it's pretty much a new thing I'm learning right now. Up until now, Pollard was used more as a relief or as a third down back. Did that frustrate him since he was drafted by the Cowboys in 2019? I've been dealing with that my whole career. I, I wouldn't be here if I was frustrated and let it get to me, so I just keep doing what I do. As a result, Pollard is coming off his best season with 719 yards, two touchdowns, but eight in his career. Elliott welcomes the help. Tony, he help a player. Just his, his uh, you know, his elusivity, his explosiveness. So, you know, I think I, I go in there, I pound him a little bit, and uh, he goes in there. He, you know, he gonna he gonna break some, break some some long ones. And if Pollard is successful with being used as a wide receiver out of the backfield, that would free up Zeke to pick up the blitz on certain plays and protect Dak Prescott even more. With the Cowboys in California, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, thanks a lot, Greg. And don't forget, tonight we are going one-on-one -on -one with Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott on instant replay. That's at 11 p.m. after the night beat. The Houston Texans had one more day of padded practices today before getting a day off tomorrow. On both sides of the ball, Houston was bad at the ground game in 2021. They couldn't run it on anyone, and they couldn't stop the run. In fact, the Texans were last in the NFL with only 1,400 rushing yards last year and only eight touchdowns. Does the offensive line take that lack of success personally? Of course we do. And I'd be lying if I say I didn't. As an offensive lineman, you want to, you know, be able to show you, show how physical you can be, get down and run the ball. Because, you know, that's at the end of the day, if you can open up the defense with the run game, that opens up uh, a whole lot of different things we could do offensively. So, yeah, that's one thing we, you know, we take pride in trying to run the ball. Rex Burkhead was the team's leading rusher last year with 430 rushing yards and three touchdowns. In the majors, the Astros get another crack at taking over the top spot in the American League, going for a series win over the Guardians. No dice today for Houston either. Bottom five, Luke Maley puts a charge in a deep left, and that is gone. His first home run since 2019 puts Cleveland up 1-0, and Houston can't get the bats going at all today. Astros fall to the fight in Tim Gerber's 1-0. After a week of practices, tomorrow officially marks the beginning of the high school volleyball season, and the Brandeis Broncos will open defense of their UIL Class 6A state title by taking on the O'Connor Panthers at Northside Sports Gym at 5.30 p.m. How does the team feel knowing that they are the team that everyone wants to beat this year. It's honestly made us that much more excited for this season, like knowing you have that target on your back and knowing that you're the ones that everybody wants to beat or just going out there and playing your hardest, knowing that everyone has this like set expectation of you. It's really exciting and it just makes you want to perform better in the gym. Can't wait to see them on the court. But before we go, take a look at this former UTSA Roadrunners tackle Spencer Burford Knows some dance moves, showing his footwork at the 49ers training camp. The fans love it, and the coaching staff loves it, too, because Burford's getting first-team reps with the offensive line. I know another reason why he's dancing. This is the last Sunday we have before the NFL season begins. It all begins next Sunday with the preseason. Thank goodness. It's been a long wait. Yes, and when the has. MLB and the Guardians come for you, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I'm just saying. They should have they changed it to the Gerbers. It's a better G name. I yeah. think it is, too. The Gerber babies. We'll be right back. <laughs>
We'll continue to see isolated rain through about sunset. Tomorrow, 10% chance for a coastal shower or storm. High temperature, 99. Most of the week next week will be at or just below 100. Best chance for rain, Thursday, 30% isolated showers and storms. I like the trend. Let's keep it going. That's all of our time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tonight for the Night Beat. See you then. Have a great evening.